Hi everyone, welcome to the KeyOps channel. I'm Rafael Lima and today we're going to start taking a look at the project that we're going to be coding using Cucumber and Researcher and we're also going to be talking about the application that we're going to be testing, how we can set up that application and run it locally. Right? So if you haven't watched any of the previous videos, please do so, so you can understand in an overview way, in a holistic way, what we are, what we are trying to achieve, uh, what is our architecture strategy, and how we, we are envisioning uh, the usage of BDD and Cucumber, right? So if you haven't subscribed, please do so. And I'm going to be posting the links for the previous video so you can keep it up, right? So the first thing that I'm going to show you is the project that I created, right? So I created a project called BDD Automation API. You're going to have access to uh, this repository and each video is going to be a different branch. So the first thing is uh, how, uh, I'm going to be posting a video here so you can see a previous video of mine on how I created the project because I use Gradle and Gradle can create the project for you. So I, I went uh, step by step on how you can use Gradle to create that project and I'm going to post the, 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 the video wrap here. Right, so, uh, but this is a basic Gradle project. We don't have much. Uh, we have only the app. Uh, we have README. We have, uh, let's see what else. We have the Gradle. So if you go into the application itself, we have the build Gradle, which only has the Java plugin. The repository is JSONer to know where to get the dependencies. I'm saying that I'm going to be using Java 14, and here are some of the dependencies. Right, we're going to be using Jackson for uh, serialization and deserialization, and this is the dependencies for uh, Cucumber. Okay? We're going to be use uh, in Rassure, of course. We're going to be using JUnit 4 because Cucumber was designed based on JUnit 4 and JUnit 5, uh, although you can use Cucumber, but there are some things that is still not 100%. So the first thing is that why we have this app package. So the new versions of Gradle uh, are creating the project with the app. You can have multiple apps here and also you can have an app in the library. So that's why they are dividing this, All right? So the first thing we can do is I can come here to the to the to the repository. My branch is the main. I'm not using master anymore. I'm using main. So I can have Gradle tasks and also I show you this and this is all the defined tasks that we have here, right? And we have one test that is for running a unit test, right? And great, we have only one test. So if you can come here to the test itself, the test doesn't do much. Uh, it's only a certain that one is one. If I say one is two, then I can, um, you can see that it fails, right? Because one is not two. Great, but that's not useful, right? Um, great. Awesome. The other thing is, how can I, how did I come up with these uh, versions, right? You're going to notice that I'm, pu I'm putting plus at the very end because I'm going to leave it to Gradle to decide uh, which version is going to be the last one. So any version that is 2, 11, whatever, I'm fine with it, right? I don't, I could, I could even say here plus. I could have said latest dot release, but why I don't do that? Because latest is going to get the latest one, and I don't want to do that because it might have breaking change when you get. Uh, so we were on version two, so the versions two to three is going to have could have a breaking change. Even versions eleven to twelve could have a breaking change, but this one here is a minor change, so I it, it it's fine here. The same things go for Cucumber, JUnit, and Rassure, right? So how did I come up with these versions? So the first thing is we can see is the is the the Cucumber documentation is going to see that there are the documentations here. You're going to see uh, how uh, it's suggesting to install. 
uh, the version 681, the unit 681, there are different versions of Gradle, so they have different ways of you using it, right? Um, so we are using 68 plus, right? So this is 68 plus. The same thing goes for rest assure, right? So, but then here is the documentation and you have the documentation of the Maven repository because although we are using Gradle, Gradle uses Maven, the Maven repository, right? And if you go into the Maven repository.com, you can search for whatever you need to, to look for. And we are looking for the JVM, Cucumber JVM Java. And you're going to see that they have the latest version from October is 682. In our case, we are using 68 plus. Then we're going to get 682, 683, 684, whatever, 68. The same things go for uh, Cucumber J unit. So if we go here and say Cucumber J unit, the same thing, 682. And the last thing is for rest assure. So if we put here rest assure, we're going to have rest assure here. And we're going to have 431. We are using 43, whatever. Right, so this is how you can see what kind of version, what is the latest version, right, they have. Also, I can go for Jackson data bind because I think it's important. Uh, Jackson data bind, because if you look at the data bind, they have a RC version. I'm not going to get that RC version, right? because uh, the 212 is on a release candidate that's why RC so they are still testing and, and, and this is not a stable version yet that's why I'm not using 212 great so now we have talked about our versioning right I'm also going to be talking about Java right so I use a uh, library called SDK and SDK allows me to have multiple versions of Java, right? So I can say SDK Java list, if I'm not mistaken, uh, SDK list Java, and I'm going to have all the versions of Java that I can install. Uh, the local only they installed, it's the ver other versions that I have right here, right? Um, so local only is probably because it doesn't have any more there, only locally, not sure. But I can see if it's installed or not, and I can install any of the versions, right? And here is how we would install a specific version. So we can have multiple versions of Java here. Therefore, uh, I am setting a automatic setup, right? So you see the, this file SDK uh, main RC. I'm saying that I'm going to be using Java uh, this specific version of Java and this helps me out because if I leave the project and I come back to the project This is going to set up that Java to the version that I want, right? You can choose whatever versions that you that you have or that you like to but then you need to match with IntelliJ and you need to match you, you would have to change here, right? You just install the 14 Great, so we're going to see which project we're going to be using, right? I'm going to be using the Swagger Pet Store. In the Swagger Pet Store, uh, you have the Pet Store itself, which is this one, uh, you, and you can use that, but that is a shared uh, version, right? That means that everybody in the internet have access to it, and therefore, it's going to be, be unstable. Uh, something that you put could be deleted, uh, or it could it could be out of uh, out of service. It could it, it could be not live anymore. So there are various things that could happen that would not be a stable version for you. So what you're going to do? You're going to be running that locally, right? Um, and you're going to be using Docker for it. So make sure you install Docker. If you're using Mac, uh, there is the Docker desktop. Uh, uh, Linux also has its own uh, way of running Docker. I think for Linux, you also for Windows, you also have the Docker desktop. All right. So what I'm going to do is going to run a specific command on the terminal to run the application. 
So I'm going to be executing this command. This is a Docker command where what I'm saying here is run Docker and create an image with this name locally, right? This is the name of the image that's going to be ran locally. I want the port to be one, two, three, four, and five on my computer, on the host computer, which is this computer that I'm using, and the container port that is going to be used is going to be 8080. So my port one, two, three, four, five is going to be mapped, going to be linked to port 880, 8080 on the container. And this is the name of the, 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 the image that I should look for. Right? And where did I get that? If you look here in the repository, uh, you're going to see that this the specific uh, command that I'm executing. Note, note that there's a difference here. There's a dash D, which I'm going to be covering a little. Uh, and the port is 8080 to 8080. So here it's saying that it's going to run the port 8080 on my computer as well. And I do not want to do that because 8080 is a common port. And that means that you can have conflicts if you are running anything else. And I don't want to run that. I don't want to have that chance, right? Of having that conflict. The first time you're going to execute this command is going to download the Docker image. It didn't enough, it didn't find, but it's now downloading, right? Uh, and this is the beauty of Docker. See, it's already found something. There was already something here that they found, and it's only downloading what I don't have. And this is going to be the same for anything else that you have on Docker. If it finds, it's going to be already there. If there is something to update, it's going to update what it, what it only needs to be updated. So I'm already running the application here. If I do localhost one two three four one two three four five i already have the pet store running locally which is great right but there is one thing that i don't like is that see this is taking my terminal right and i don't want that to take my terminal so what i'm going to do i'm going to pass a dash d which is de detachable i'm going to say run it but do not hold my my pet store my uh, do not hold my terminal so i need to stop the pet store first uh stop pet store and now i can run again now i need to stop and delete docker rm pet store all right so now i have the image here and i can rerun it right great so i have already here the pet store running and functioning and this is what you're going to do right so if i do doc fps you're going to see that the image is already here it's going to see that uh, it's mapping the port one two three four to eighty eighty this is the container id uh this is the name of the image right so if i do docker stop pet store Now, if I do Docker PS, I don't have it here and it's not working anymore, right? And if I do Docker RM pet store, it's going to delete the container, but it's not going to delete the image, right? If I do Docker images dash A, it's going to list all the images that it already has on my computer. But you can see there are a bunch of images here, MariaDB, Ubuntu, and a bunch of other stuff that I use, uh, PHP, WordPress, but you're also going to notice the Swag API pet store, right? And the unstable version, which is the one that we, we downloaded, right? So these images is already here on my computer. So when I run Docker, uh, I, the, the Docker run command again, is just going to start. It doesn't need to upload or change anything. If the people from Swagger changed, they updated the version, then you would note uh, or you would identify that there was a change on this specific unstable version and which is the latest, right? Unstable is just is saying to us that it's it's not very, it's, it's unstable. It's the latest one, the one that they are working on. So you can see that there were changes, changes on that uh, three months ago. Great. So now we have everything to start our project, right? So I'm going to 
uh, there is nothing to commit this is basically what we we have I'm going to create a branch called uh, 01 um, basic Gradle project great and now you already have access to this branch all right thank you for watching uh, I hope you like it if you like it give the thumbs up if you haven't subscribed please do so we are just in started starting the next video we're going to start creating the first BDD test uh, sorry the first cucumber test uh, and it's going to be really interesting right so thank you for watching mm -hmm.